Hi everyone, this is Marika Kanon from Royal FAB. Great to have you all joining our webinar of today, Cracking Plant-Based Dairy Challenges with Potato. We have a lot to cover in this hour, so first I would like to quickly go through the agenda for today. Okay, looking at the agenda of today, first of all, uh, we'll start with a swift introduction about Royal AVB. Then we dive into the top trends of plant-based dairy and cheese. We continue with what are the main challenges within creating plant-based dairy and cheese products, followed by going really taking a deep dive into some case studies. How did we create a delicious ice cream, plant-based ice cream, and how did we also create a mouth-watering plant-based cheese? Um, we round up with the key takeaways, and then, of course, there's a lot of time uh, for the Q&A at the end. Um, I'm really excited to do this together with two of my colleagues. First of all, you see me left on the screen, Marika Kanon, working as a marketing communications manager for AVB. Uh, welcome, Akalim Vermu, strategic marketing manager. And welcome, my other colleague, Malek Nurtuzun, segment manager within AVB. The three of us will, will give this uh, webinar today. Um, before we dive into the first topic covering Royal AVB as a company, I would like to um, discuss uh, yeah, some household um, uh, housekeeping points to go over. Uh, how to get the most out of today. First of all, you see a resource button on the left side, probably on your screen. Uh, it has our recipe flyers from the case studies. It has our presentation, some videos that you also see during this webinar. Um, if you have questions, please add them to the, to the Q&A tab, which you also see in this resources section. Um, if you have technical issues, you can try to refresh your, uh, your screen. That uh, can always help. And if you do not manage to get back, please uh, send and a question in the Q&A tab to, uh, to go to that. And then we will try to figure everything out. Going to Royal AVB. Well, um, let's set the stage for Royal AVB. We are existing already since 1919, and we always have taken the, the humble potato as our main source of ingredients. So we are a farmers cooperative and our breeding station Averas makes sure our farmers are getting the most sustainable and the most uh, best potato breeds to get the, the potato starch and the potato protein from. Our 2300 members, they are based in the Netherlands and in Germany, and they supply the, the potatoes to our factories. So we have factories in northwest of Europe, where we take out the potato starch, the potato protein, and the potato fibers. And we use these in different, uh, or our customers use these in different end products. For, for example, think about pet food, industrial products, but also, of course, food, which we will be covering today. Um, yeah, if you look at our customer base, we supply customers worldwide, and we make sure that they get the most the best ingredients and the best uh, technical know-how from the people from our innovation center. So I think as a company, we are really also international oriented. We have a lot of colleagues also working in the innovation center from all nationalities, which brings in also uh, a lot of knowledge on how to get the most out of the potato ingredients in your final end products. Going to the next topic, uh, I would like to give the floor to my colleague Akali to take us to the, uh, through the top trends for plant-based dairy and plant-based cheese. Well, thank you, Marika. Um, within the upcoming next minutes, I will guide you to uh, the latest or the top trends related to plant-based dairy and plant-based cheese. And this is also related to plant-based food in general. The first trend is that uh, understanding the consumer behavior is one of the major challenges for man uh, managers, food managers, and also food companies to meet the consumer needs and their demands. Because consumers are caring about what they eat and how it is produced and also the impact on the environmental and the society. But on the other way, consumers do not behave in a uh, homogeneous way. And differ in the way they make decisions towards their uh, food and uh, what they uh, will buy. So 
that leads me to the brings me to the next uh, trend, and that is where uh, global consumer survey is really um, showing that flexitarian are the largest segment consumer groups that are driving the force behind the plant-based foods. And considering that 42% of the global consumers are flexitarian, that really means that it's a very large consumer group. Um, we do have to keep in mind that flexitarian nowadays is different than in the past. A flexitarian years ago was a vegetarian person who sometimes eat tra uh, traditional dairy or traditional cheese. But nowadays a flexitarian is a traditional dairy or traditional cheese consumer who also incorporates plant-based foods into their daily diet. So that is really something different than what it was in the past. And we also have to think and remember that this is a very sophisticated target group and they are also looking for a convenient way to include this very innovative and adventure taste experience into their daily diet. And they aren't willing really not willing to com compromise on their enjoyment. And that brings me also towards the next uh, top trend, because when we want to have this consumer uh, group, really a loyal consumer base, we really have to be make sure that taste and texture are really king. Because one number one reason for consumer not to eat plant-based products is that the taste and texture is really lacking. Uh, almost 80% uh, in research shows 80% of the consumers are really having taste and texture as the first attribute when they are choosing a plant-based dairy or plant-based cheese product. And the second reason is really that they want to have it less artificial or not too processed being uh, available. So that is really uh, uh, to consider and also to keep in mind by developing plant-based dairy and cheese products. This is another um, trend. This is also related, of course, to plant-based food, plant-based dairy and plant-based cheese. Um, plant-based, the rationale why consumers are looking for plant-based products is one of the key drivers that it is healthier for me. It is also healthier for the planet. So they really want to reduce the footprint, the footprint by using and eating plant-based products. When we look for the horizon of plant-based food, what will be uh, next, but also already visible within plant-based dairy and plant-based cheese products, that people want to understand the ingredients list. They really want to have a cleaner label. They want to know what they are eating, and that will become more and more and more important. Research of FMCG Guru shows that more than 60% of the consumers are, le are looking for sustainability claims on pack when they are, look uh, when they are purchasing their plant-based food product. And this brings me really to one of the main insights, which we are very happy about. Because when uh, independent research shows, when we are asking flexitarian people what type of ingredient or want to have as main ingredient in plant-based food, it's mentioned potato. Potato is the most favorable ingredient by flexitarian. And that is, of course, great news, but it's also good for everybody because Mel, my colleague, will also explain the added value of potato within plant-based food later on during this uh, webinar. And we also have to uh, recognize that flexitarian is a large group, so that is really a, a plus plus. And mentioning potato as being a very favorable ingredient for flexitarian, I would also like to mention that also potato is a very sustainable crop source. And that connected to that more than 60% of the consumers are looking for sustainability claims on PEC, showcase that potato is really a, a very nice and suitable crop source for plant-based food. Because this graph shows that Potato versus pea and soy, also two main ingredients used within plant-based dairy and plant-based cheese products, shows that potato is really a nice and very sustainable uh, crop source to use within plant-based uh, dairy and plant-based cheese foods. These were my uh, top trends, uh, Marika. So may I give the floor back to you? Thank you, Apolline, for the really the latest insights in the trends around plant-based dairy and cheese. Yeah, we just learned the taste and texture are king, and the potato is one of the most favorable ingredients, which I think is for us uh, it's 
it's, it's very good. Now I would really like to go from the top trends to the main challenges in creating plant-based dairy and cheese, because we all know there are a lot. Um, I would like to give the floor to Mel. Uh, can you talk us through the main challenges and how the potato can play a role? Yes, thank you, Maria Kay. And also I would like to thank Akalin for all the insights. Uh, so let's go through the challenges right now. And we will also have a little look at, as a briefly, like what are the consumer needs again? So as a summary, the consumer demand for the plant-based and cleaner label products are increasing, especially flexitarians, they would like to have the best texture and taste possible. And we also would like to understand what are the challenges for the manufacturers, because we as ABB would like to shape our solutions according to consumer needs and for the manufacturer needs. So we noticed that the manufacturer challenges are really based on some solubility issues or less functionality issues with those plant-based ingredients. And these are often causing some uh, problems with the color or taste, like off taste. And there are some different textures that are not really expected from the products. And it's, it's really hard to fit those ingredients in the current processes. And there are some issues with the labeling, like uh, the allergenicity, the GMO, or other, uh, other labeling issues. So that's why ABB ingredients based on potato are really creating a perfect potential for those uh, challenges. Why? Uh, first of all, ABB starch fiber and proteins are really high quality. The protein itself has unique functionalities, which I will be showing you in the coming slides, and the starch as well. Uh, sensorial wise, potato is a very beautiful source to be used in plant-based dairy and cheese because it has a very neutral taste doesn't affect, the, doesn't affect the taste profile. And at the same time, it provides a good white color. Uh, it's highly sustainable, as Akaline mentioned, and uh, all ABB potatoes are guaranteed GMO free. Uh, it's no need to label as an allergen. So these are really perfect matching uh, solutions for the challenges that we just saw. And let's go a little bit deeper in the potato Okay, ABB is producing potato protein and potato starch. What are these ingredients helping with? First of all, the protein is really good functional in terms of emulsification. It is key function for a plant-based dairy or cheese application. Emulsification is very important. At the same time, it can also provide foaming if needed, for example, an application like plant-based ice cream. And there are some other uh, functions of potato proteins like gelling, heat gel, that is like um, egg white behavior. So gelling upon heating. So these kind of functions are more related to meat binding kind of capabilities that the potato protein has. But of course, the starches that ABB has are not only uh, the regular cook of viscous fire starches. That's why I wanted to show it here. Uh, we are helping with a lot the term reversible gelling so this is uniquely an abb capability of the potato starch and of course there is also a thickening and in the end product if melting or shredding or any set type setting time uh, sort of requirements needed then the starch is helping so what i'm trying to show here is really the texture itself is not enough ABB always looks for providing texture together with the right appearance, right mouthfeel, right end product attributes. So let's go even uh, further with the protein. I would like to show you today a couple of good functionalities of potato protein is helping us creating the end textures. Um, first of all, the functionalities, yeah, the, the protein itself is very easy to dissolve. So the solution is created from the powder, is easy. And when we heat this solution, uh, it's, it's a gelling, as I mentioned, it's like a gelling upon heating kind of behavior. That's why it is helping a lot with binding capabilities in a vegan burger, for example. Or if we go and uh, mix this solution with oil or fat, we are getting a perfect smooth white emulsion and it's really helpful in in the gelled emulsions like vegan cheeses or our plant-based dairy applications and also as i mentioned before we also can get foaming effect from the pro 
protein, uh, it is really helping a lot with uh, ice cream type of applications. Uh, so those are the good attributes that we are very lucky to have potato protein in plant-based dairy and cheese applications. And we have a video about it in, and it's better to see how it is really helping with the, you know, uh, emulsions and the forming uh, with the good solubility. I would like to show you now how it is in these behaviors. All those good functions that are really helping a lot with some plant-based dairy and cheese applications, especially in ice cream when forming aeration is needed. So we have a case study about it. We will go back to the um, benefits of the potato protein itself in the coming slides. But now I would like to take you through our texturizing all-in-one solution called Perfectosol for plant-based dairy and cheese. What is Perfectosol? It is a complete drop-in solution, a texturizer for creamy and stretchy plant-based dairy and cheese products. Perfectosol is a solution for every kind of texturizing function you would accept expect from a texturizer. It can texturize, it can thicken, it can gel, it can emulsify all these functions all together. And it's therefore can also replace other, uh, other, other modified starches or unwanted hydrocolloids in the recipes because they are, a, a, a perfect soul products are already doing the job themselves. And uh, let's have a look at the texture range that we can get from these potatoes ingredients. We can start with drinkable products like uh, drinking yogurt, for example. These are all plant-based uh, recipes that we currently have. And the spoonable products, there can be like a plant-based yogurt, plant-based Greek style yogurt, or plant-based desserts. They can be aerated like mousses. And at the same time, we can think about some spoonable or soft serve plant-based ice cream. Those are very white. And what about the cheeses? Yeah, Perfectosol can create a perfect texture range for plant-based cheese it is really providing the majority of the texture range starting from pourable products to very extra firm cheeses. Uh, by pourable, I mean, we can think about an application like a plant-based cheese sauce. So we can think about a dippable, spreadable dip kind of plant-based cheese, or we can go a bit firmer spreadable, a real cream cheese style of plant-based cheese. Then we go for the block types such as cuttable alternative to feta salad cubes. So it is a white block, or we can get a sliceable block, which is uh, mostly used in like sandwiches, or we have the shreds that are mostly used in pizza, and uh, it's uniquely have this stretching and melting capability. And lately we launched the uh, plant-based Parmesan, plant-based alternative to Parmesan, and it is a very firm cheese, 
that can be grated and sprinkled on top of the foods that we have. Um, first, I would like to show you the range with a video and you will see what, I, what do I mention by a smooth yogurt or a white cream cheese or cutability, spreadability or crumbly feta cheese. So let's have a look at the video first and then we will dive in those applications about the main benefits. Yes, that was our video about our applications, not limited to what you see in the video. We have much more applications. However, let's go through and understand better what can potato-based ingredients help with in plant-based dairy and cheese. Today, we would like to present you some case studies, uh, especially for the applications ranged from ice cream, then yogurt, then cream cheese, uh, then the plant-based pizza topping that we saw in the video, it was stretchy. And then we will go for the feta cubes and the Parmesan type hard cheese. Ice cream, plant-based ice cream. What would the, be the challenge? The consumers really expect an ice cream, plant-based ice cream to be in a good texture uh, that is aerated and with a good, nice taste profile not so many off notes and at the same time they would like to have a good color especially this is related to the white vanilla type of plant-based ice creams because this is the challenge to get it in the correct white color sometimes so how can we achieve this um, the solution abb has is the potato protein solonic 300 uh, it is a clean label free from allergen labeling functional potato protein and it is very easy to formulate and process what are some benefits that potato protein provides to ice cream applications? Potato protein Solonic 300 is very easy to work with. It is easy solubilized and it has very strong emulsification properties that is helping with ice cream emulsification. At the same time, it is a good forming product that providing this aeration and enabling the having the high overrun in the end product of ice cream. So these are really key attributes needed by the plant-based ice cream. And it is really in terms of the sensorial properties, providing this nice white color, thanks to having a good emulsification power. And at the same time, very neutral taste doesn't affect at all the taste profile. So the flavor will not be affected by the emulsifier or the protein used in the ice cream. Uh, 
And it is not only limited to the hard packed ice cream, we can also think about ice creams like uh, sorbets, soft serve ice cream, or hard packed ice cream. What is the next case study we have? We also have yogurts, plant based yogurts are one of the top plant based products that we consume. And consumers would like to have the yogurts to be smooth, creamy, and at the same time, the taste and texture eating experience should be a little bit close to the traditional yogurt that we consume. So that's why it is a main challenge to make it uh, similar to the traditional yogurt, at the same time having those ingredients, clean label, sustainable and non-GMO. The solution is Perfectosol D500. Uh, Perfectosol, as I mentioned, is a product containing potato starch and potato protein for the right texture in the end product together with taste and appearance. It is creating those perfect, fresh, creamy, spoonable yogurts, which taste good, and at the same time, very similar texture of the spoonability for a traditional yogurt. And the Perfecto Sol D500 is a, like, uh, like a melting mouth profile. So it is full mouth feeling and creaminess in the plant-based yogurts. And this is giving, uh, Perfecto Sol D500 giving a perfect texture for the spoons. And at the same time, the gelling and emulsification power is really helping with the stability of the yogurt. So this white and smooth yogurt is stable during the shelf life and it is free from allergen labeling, easy to use, and it can replace other modified starches or hydrocolloids in a fresh plant-based yogurt. The next case study is the cream cheese, plant-based cream cheese. How do consumers want the cream cheese to be? They would like to have a smooth, creamy texture, and at the same time, they would like to have the plant-based cream cheese without any artificial off notes. They don't want to experience new tastes when they are tasting the spreads. And at the same time, when we think about the manufacturer point of view, they would like to have a texturizer product to be easy to use. And at the same time, it would like to be free from bold allergens like, uh, like dairy, soy and nuts or gluten. And at the same time, they would like to have a stable shelf life. What is the solution to create a product like that? It is again D500, the same product that we go for the plant based yogurt, because it is really perfect, the best in class, to create this smooth, creamy, soft plant based spreadable cheese. And it can again replace all modified or unwanted ingredients. It is creating all in one a good, full, dairy like eating experience for. Uh, plant-based cream cheeses and it is clean label it contains potato starch and potato protein the benefits are um, first of all it is really again the emulsification capability of perfect Sol d500 is leading in the end very wide a good product and stable product and d500 is really contains really carefully selected potato starches and proteins for the most similar spreading behavior to traditional dairy. And it has the gelling and emulsification multifunctionality. So this is really required in an environment like where we are producing plant-based cream cheese. It is again, clean label, free from allergen labeling, and it is very easy to formulate, easy to use uh, during the processing. Let's go now and see a little bit of the block cheeses. Let's start with the pizza cheese. The, the main challenge for the pizza cheese, of course, uh, plant-based pizza cheese, we expect it to be a little bit like uh, melty and stretchy, just as the traditional pizza cheese. So these are the first consumer and manufacturer challenges that we notice in the market. The products currently are having issues with the melt and stretch. And the consumers are also looking for, of course, sustainable and uh, good allergen, I mean, less allergen products. The solution is Perfectosol D520. D520 is a perfect solution that is uniquely creating a stretch and melt in the plant-based pizza cheese. 
it is really difficult to obtain this kind of stretch and melt without casein's involvement. So we are really happy to provide you today with the benefits of Perfectosol D520, which is again very neutral in taste and white color if it is needed to have a, a, as a base white color. What are the benefits? So first of all, it is very excellent shreddability pro, uh, properties. So if the product needs to be sold under a shredded format, it is also possible and those shreds are not really sticking to each other. And D520 is providing the perfect emulsification and gelling that in the end we have the right texture and balanced texture for melt and stretch. It can again replace the modified starches or hydrocolloids because it is clean label, it will clean up the recipes and the recipes are really easy. There are really less ingredients involved and it is stable during the shelf life. This is one of the ABB's patented in innovations. It is a patented innovation by ABB, easy to formulate and easy to use. As a next case study today, we would like to go for the plant-based alternative to feta cubes. So when it comes to feta, it is really key to have a good white color and crumbly texture in mouth. And consumers really expect it to be melt in mouth, creamy taste profile. And at the same time, the demand for variety is also increasing. So including new varieties in plant-based area is good. But how can we do with clean label? The solution is, Perfectosol D500 together with Perfectosol D520. So these two products that we recently saw in other applications together creating a unique profile of a similar cheese to plant-based feta cheese that really looks, feels and tastes like traditional feta cheese in terms of eating experience. It is clean label, it is based on potato starch and potato protein the benefits of these two ingredients together are, first of all, this is a perfect texturizing solution that is giving us, in the end, a firm cuttable texture and it's crumbly. At the same time, it is very wide and this creamy dairy-like texture without any off taste is giving us a very good eating experience. These two together is the perfect emulsifying and gelling solution for a shelf-stable plant-based cheese alternative to feta types. And the next case study today we have is the plant-based Parmesan. The challenge in the marketplace is currently that the demand of variety inc is increasing. As I mentioned in the feta example, we would like to have more variety, more flavors, more textures in plant-based dairy and cheese area. And the consumers are really interested in good clean label, easy to understand ingredients list kind of products. And what do they expect from a Parmesan uh, powder, for example, is they would like to have the similar taste to traditional Parmesan and the texture should also be firm if it is sold like a triangle block or it should be a good grated, non-stick to each other grated product with a screen sprinkled on top of the foods. What is the solution? Uh, the solution we have as ABB is Perfectosol D540. We can proudly say that it is first clean label plant-based texturizer and gelling solution for a plant-based alternative to Parmesan type cheese. It is a firm, extra firm cheese, can be grated or can be as a block form. It is based on potato starch and potato protein. The benefits of Perfectosol D540 is that, of course, in the end, it is creating a very good, firm, extra firm cheese. Uh, but it has also outstanding grating or shredding properties. These fine powders or shredded pieces do not stick to each other. So in the packaging or in the, in the pack that we are using, the grated product, grated pieces, we don't need, need to use any anti-caking agent, for example. And it is very neutral in taste, it, so it can be flavored as, as a Parmesan or as any other cheese if needed. It is, in the end, creating this white base color for differentiating opportunities. Uh, D540, as other Perfectosols, 
is very easy to use, is a drop-in solution, easy to formulate, and uh, it is providing this nice texture that is expected from a Parmesan type cheese. Let's better understand it from a video. We also have a video that, are, that is showing the capabilities of D540 in a Parmesan type of hard cheese. And please keep the sound on because we would like you to hear the sound of grating. There, another perfecto sole that is really helping in the end product required texture, appearance, and taste. So I would like to now give the floor back to Marieke to take us through the key takeaways, and we will see you now later for the question and answer session. Okay, thank you, Mel. Well, I think to, to sum up this webinar, some see potato, but we see endless possibilities. I think our potato ingredients can crack a lot of the plant-based dairy and cheese challenges. Um, yeah, to sum up, taste and texture yeah, are most important for choosing plant-based products. So both uh, uh, from a consumer side, we really need to take that into account. Potato is a sustainable crop source, which could really help out creating these delicious plant-based cheese and dairy products. And it's really the number one wanted ingredient by flexitarians, which makes really a large part of the population. Diving into the solution that we have to offer, it's Perfecta Sol. It's made of potato starch and potato protein, and it has it can really supply a range of different texture solutions. I think Mel showed exactly already, like in six case studies, how it could really help you creating the most perfect plant-based dairy and cheese products. But it can do so much more. Um, well, I have it summed up here already. Uh, rich and creamy, excellent dairy-like mouthfeel, white appearance, base for any desired color in your end product, easy to use. It's really a drop-in solution. It has a really good shelf life stability, and uh, we have it abundant available. So it's really uh, uh, for, um, for your challenge, and that brings me already to the next one. Uh, we really invite you to approach Mel with your plant-based dairy or plant-based cheese challenge or both. Um, we, you are invited to explore and taste our solutions, of course, at our innovation center. Um, but yeah, I really would like to uh, encourage you to share your challenge with Mel and then uh, we'll connect with you how we think the potato can play a role in solving that. Then I would like to go now to the Q&A section because we got a lot of different questions in the chat. Yeah, um, to go with a lot of different questions. So I would like to start already with the first one. And I think, Akaline, that's a question for you. How can we make plant-based products uh, more attractive for the market? Um, well, how can we make it? It's also visible in several uh, researches. And I also mentioned it within our top trends. It is really uh, taste and texture are really uh, uh, very important there. That's the main reason why consumers are not trying them or that they do not uh, repeat their uh, consumption. And also Euromonitor showed in uh, May last year or this year that, uh, that that is really the, the main obstacle. 
And uh, we estimate or we think with fermentation and also with uh, other type of technologies, there will be a lot of improvements. So uh, so that can make it even more attractive. And that's also why Mel showed several solutions with the potato in which we can really provide and help with the taste and texture to optimize. Okay, thank you. Uh, a while ago, uh, Solenic Potato Protein, so our brand of potato protein, um, had a lot of availability issue. Uh, did you manage to solve it, Mel? Um, yeah, that's a good question because, um, uh, yeah, in the past, due to the uh, growing demand overall in the world and uh, as being uh, one of the good sources uh, for uh, low CO2 emissions and at the same time as potato protein has one of the best uh, functionality for plant-based foods. That we had some uh, issues, but then Royal AVB, of course, intends and strategize towards growing in plant-based food. We would like to keep our place of being one of the top suppliers for the plant-based food markets. That's why uh, we invested and extended our capacity and right now we have abundant availability of the products uh, since we now don't have any uh, capacity issues at the moment. Okay, thank you. Um, is it possible to have a process tolerant, uh, non-viscosifying yet gel forming potato ingredient? Mel. Yes, thank you very much for this question because um, uh, Perfectosol D500 is one of our uh, Perfectosol products that is designed to create in the end product spoonability or spreadability and it can um, it can be used in the processes without in, uh, without any effect on the viscosity. So it, it is process tolerant. It will not contribute to the viscosity. It will form the required gel and the texture after only being cooled down. Uh, so this refers to averagely around 12 to 24 hours at the chilled temperatures. Okay, thank you. Um, then another one, a uh, question, I think it's also for you. Um, do you have a dairy-free bechamel white sauce? Um, yeah, of course, I think uh, we have, we, we can work together or we can create together most of the requi required uh, end products. And I think uh, one of our solutions we have already for vegan cheese sauce, uh, that can be a good base to start with uh, Perfectosol D520. Uh, so we, I, I strongly recommend that uh, we, we meet further about this project because we have a solution for it. Okay, so that's already an invitation for the person who, yes. <laughs> who made this question to get in touch with you. Um, any, there's another question. Any potato milks that I have seen in the market have very low actual potato protein and uh, have, are actually having a much higher pea protein isolate inclusion. How much of a dairy powder processor go about having potato protein as an inclusion in their current cow milk powder offering? Oh, okay. Um, I, I noticed there are some questions regarding to uh, the hybrid products of uh, um, creating a product together with the uh, um, animal-based protein and the plant-based protein. And um, we, we, unfortunately, we have not yet checked how would be uh, the the behavior of the uh, of the potato protein inclusion in such such metrics. So. But, but there is a market potential and there is an increase in the uh, trend. So I again invite to collect, uh, get together and uh, let's together work on this kind of uh, products further. Okay, thank you. Uh, talking about uh, trends and expect your, uh, expect your growth, uh, Akaline, the plant-based sector uh, is the growth of is currently limited, but what is the estimated outlook and which segment will expand? Well, I think you showed it's not limited, but uh, well, it is uh, currently it's living a little bit slowing down. Let me put it that way. Indeed, uh, it's mainly in America uh, where it's really uh, slowing down a little bit. But we estimated also uh, Euro monitor shows it that uh, they really estimate that all the segments will expand um, and also grow towards uh, 2026 uh, with uh, uh, 
a majority of a double digit. Milk is really a, one of the of the mature uh, segments, but when you look at some segments uh, itself, plant-based yogurt is really going to expand mainly uh, globally, but mainly in uh, Europe. And when you look from uh, an ice cream perspective, there will be a lot of focus on plant-based ice cream in uh, in America. So it is cooling down, but we expect and also, well, there is a need for plant-based products uh, worldwide. And also with improvement of the taste and texture and also a uh, new variety on shelf that will really help to uh, to broaden this, uh, this category. Yeah. Um, Mel, what is the difference between Perfectosol D500 and D520? Can you uh, yeah, D500. Yeah, sure. Um, D500, as I mentioned, is the one that creates these no, uh, nice soft uh, gels or spoonable textures to spreadable textures. It is more designed to create the mouth feel, the creaminess in mouth. And D520 is the one that we create the uh, block cheese, such as uh, pizza shreds, for example, that in the end, after you further process this product in a pizza oven, for example, it will give you the right melt or stretch. So both of them are uh, clean label solutions with the same labeling in the end, however, very different in terms of the end products. Yeah, but if people want to know more information, I think it's best also to, also to connect with you. Um, exactly. What is the general usage rate of Solenic 300 and Perfectasol? Yeah, um, so Perfectasols are all designed uh, related to the their uh, reference dairy applications. So uh, it's fair to say it depends on the application a lot and also the rest of the ingredients. And um, for Solenic, the same case happens, but uh, what we see, since it is very, very strong uh, functionality product in terms of emulsification and uh, and other functionalities, we don't use it so much. But this all depends on the end products. Again, uh, it's best to uh, discuss for each application. Yeah, and maybe it's also a good moment to refer to our resource section to take a look at some of the recipe flyers. So people can get an mm -hmm. idea for the the products you presented. Exactly. Um, another one is the feta cheese product also clean label under FDA legislation or only in the EU? Yes, we have a clean label feta solution for uh, FDA legislation as well. Okay. Um, are you still the only manufacturer of potato protein and how do you supply worldwide or do we only supply in the, in the European Union? Um, to our knowledge, we are the only functional potato protein isolate producer and at the same time we, pro we, we, we provide our product globally. Yes, yeah, so we have sales offices worldwide. Um, and uh, now also someone saying thank you for your presentation. Well, uh, we were happy to, to give you the presentation. What recommend recommendations do you have to combat the bitterness coming from the potato protein, especially with regard to taste and mouthfeel? Yes, all these uh, case studies together with the other applications uh, that I mentioned today, with the given dosages, we noticed that we can achieve very clean taste profile together with the uh, uh, no off taste limitations. Uh, so that's why um, in, in, in our recipes, uh, we, we base, the, we, we calculate the required dosages and it works under those re dosages that uh, it doesn't uh, create any bitterness of, or off taste, that you don't need to use any anti-masking agent, for example. So if, if there are further question marks or comments that you would like to discuss with us, please connect, connect with me. Yeah. Um, how low in moisture can you get with the Parmesan cheese? Can you go below 35% so you can store it at an ambient temperature? This is uh, a little bit, uh, again, uh, again, different towards the uh, end product uh, expectations. I know we can go very low with it, but even a Parmesan or extra firm cheese recipe um, changes 
uh, upon briefs. So that's why um, I, uh, our, our colleagues based in the Netherlands who are working uh, in, in the laboratory can help best uh, with your question. And I would be really happy to connect you with them. Okay. Um, do you have an offer of organic certified varieties of your ingredients? Unfortunately, we don't have any organic certification, but uh, there are some, um, we would like to help you further with it. Of course, we would like to uh, provide you some help. So uh, we, can, we can discuss it offline, uh, but what can we do further about this? Um, does a pizza cheese made with Perfectasol D520 maintain, uh, maintain melting and stretch capability well if the pizza is frozen and then placed in an oven? Yes, exactly. This is also how we tasted it. So uh, I, I uh, invite you to try our solution. Um, what are the possibilities of obtaining a smaller, now I have to check it, MQs of AVB products in the UK? Yeah. yeah. Aleta, I think uh, we will directly connect you with our sales manager in UK for this question. Great. Um, is the cream cheese baked stable? Um, cream cheese solution we have, as I mentioned, the thermoreversibility. So perfect as all the 500 is the one that will not contribute any process viscosity because it is thermoreversible. That's why it will, it would melt in the uh, cream, uh, yeah, cheesecake. Uh, but this doesn't limit uh, us to go further. So we can add other products that can help you with the bake stability. Okay. And then we got some questions about, uh, we have the, the Perfecta Sol range, and then we have the letter D behind it. Um, there's a question, what does the number after, what does D means and the number after the letter and how to choose the best one uh, for our product development? Yeah, I hope uh, um, the slides or the case studies were helpful about uh, answering a little bit of this question um, because um, the numbers, are based uh, on on the a little bit on the texture. However, D stands for dairy. So Perfectasol D is the product group that we have for plant-based dairy and cheese texturizers. And uh, if you would like to receive from us a complete look overview, then we can provide that to you. We have those uh, brochures for you to just see what Perfectasol D stands for, what kind of application. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's also bringing us to an end. That's all we have uh, time for today. If we haven't responded to your question yet, we will answer it on a short notice. Um, don't forget to download the resources you see on the bottom left. And uh, yeah, thank you all for joining. Uh, we would be really happy if you would fill in the questionnaire at the end to, to even bring a better webinar next time with even more case studies. So any feedback is really welcome. And thank you all for joining and have a wonderful day.